Welcome to Basic Brewing Radio for Thursday, May 2nd, 2024. I'm James Spencer. Here at Basic Brewing Radio, we're all about home brewing. This week, Matt Givanisi from Brew Cabin and Josh Secor from Gambit Brewing join me to formulate the recipe for a white IPA. And I subject Matt and Josh to tasting my hoppy raw ale. If you want to support us financially, check out patreon.com slash basic brewing. And many thanks to everybody who's helping out in that way. If you go to patreon.com slash basic brewing, you can see a long list of stuff that you can access if you sign up as a supporter. Many thanks to the new Patreon subscribers who are signing up every week. Your help is very much appreciated. Next week, financial supporters will see an early release of the video of my small batch Belgian single, along with the recipe and a behind the scenes video. That was just a small batch, and it's it's all gone, sadly. A really simple recipe that Chris Colby and I formulated on this show a few weeks back. And, uh, you know, if I weren't brewing a bunch of other beers all the time, I'd do that one again. That, that was a perfect beer that would be great for the summertime. Some good news for Tulsa homebrewers. There's a new brew shop in town. They're not paying me to say this. Just thought I'd pass along the info. It's called Small Batch Brutique. And it's at 2429 North Aspen Avenue in Broken Arrow. They're now open. And if you go there, you'll see a familiar face. Dave from High Gravity is working there. Right now, they're not selling online, just in person. So if you're in the Tulsa area, drop by Small Batch Brutique in Broken Arrow. And please tell them I said hi and good luck. If you follow me on Instagram, Facebook, and even Threads, Uh, You probably saw the pictures of my messy guest bathroom. I brewed the beer that Matt, Josh, and I will formulate on this week's show. And let's just say it was an eventful fermentation. (laughs) Susan came up to me as I was brushing my teeth and said something like, Your beer had a little leak. I could smell it before I saw it. Well, (laughs) you know, I figured the airlock filled and and leaked or even blew off uh, the bucket. But I wasn't ready For what I saw, the airlock had indeed blown off, and then the lid on the bucket blew open, uh, you know, kind of spilling foam down the side and spinning some of it into the nearby bathtub. It was pretty impressive, I have to say. Uh, You know, I got no idea how the sound of the explosion didn't wake us up. It must have been dang loud. took me about 45 minutes to clean up. Next time, I'll try to remember the firm cap S. I blame myself. (laughs) I think the beer will be perfectly fine. Uh, The cleaned up fermenter is uh, now in the bathtub, by the way, just in case. I don't think there'll be any any other problems. I did put some firm firm cap in after the catastrophe, but it should be great. I brewed that beer with a B44 whiteout from our friends and sponsors at Imperial Yeast. And no, there was no starter needed to get that kind of activity. Those 200 billion cells of whiteout went right to work. And got the airlock bubbling with just like a couple, three hours. Then they got really happy, apparently, uh, and had a party and wanted to get out. <laughs> I got the whiteout from Jake at Bacchus and Barleycorn up in Kansas City, and he was great about following up on the status of my order. You know, he was worried because he put a small ice pack in with the yeast, which is what he normally does in milder months. And the yeast was still cool when it got to me in the two-day shipment, but the ice pack had melted. I assured him that everything would be okay, no worries. But he contacted Rory up at Imperial Customer Service and asked him to check with me to make sure everything was okay. So I got an email from Rory. Turns out, I said, Roy, the packet wasn't swollen. Everything could be just fine. Turns out, of course, we had no worries at all with viability as evidenced by the mess in my bathroom. Again, my fault for not using Firm Cap S on this beer. I should have known better knowing the recipe and the style and all that stuff. So with this brew, we get a story of great product quality and excellent customer service from Jake and Rory. Uh, The seasonal yeast from Imperial is A37 Pog, which is a Gweich strain that did a great job with my Hoppy Raw Ale, which again we'll taste on the show. I'm looking forward to deploying it on my hot porch soon. And, uh, you know, since it's a Kvike, loves the heat. Ask your local homebrew uh, home store about A37 Pog, B44 Whiteout, and check out all the dependable deliciousness at imperialyeast.com. That's imperialyeast.com. 
Okay, let's talk to Matt and Josh and build this explosive white IPA. Matt Giovanisi, welcome back to Basic Brewing Radio. Thanks for having me. Josh Secor, welcome back to Basic Brewing Radio. Thanks for having me back. Matt from Brew Cabin, brewcabin.com, the Brew Cabin YouTube channel. Josh from Gambit Brewing Company up there in St. Paul. St. Paul, Minnesota. Yeah. All right. It's been a, been a little while since we, uh, we've gotten together. The last time we got together, we formulated the recipe for a Saison for Matt to make. Uh, and the, the, um, the plan was for Matt to make uh, sort of the basic Saison and bottle some of that and then shuffle the rest of it off for some aging. Where do we stand, Matt? Well, I have I did, I did three things. Uh, so I made 10 gallons of it. I took about, I want to say s- almost six gallons of it, and I stored that for long storage. And then I took the rest or some of it and I bottled it into seven uh, fifties. And, and then I took a little bit, like almost a gallon of it and kegged it. So I have three different versions of it. Mm. Um, the kegged version is I've been tasting that along the way. Cause that's, it's still hazy, not crazy hazy, but you know, um, I guess a chill haze. It's very sweet. It's, it's, good but sweet and i think that's because of all the you know we were trying to make a sweeter beer for the long-term stuff mm. now uh for the bottles um we've been having some fluctuations in temperature here so it's uh it was 80 degrees last week and then we got uh four to five inches of snow <laughs> and now it's 80 again so <laughs> We, uh, so I am actually holding a bottle because I, I, after two weeks of bottle conditioning, I popped one open and it was not carbonated. Oh, wow. And so it's now been, I bottled it on, uh, March 28th. So it's what, roughly three weeks. And I'm going to open one now just to hear it oh. on, on, on the radio, if you don't mind. Okay. All right. We'll see. We'll see what happens. All right. This here we go. Exciting. Here we go. Oh. oh, that's got that's oh. got oh, that's oh, that's, that's got nice. carbs. That's all right. Let's nice. let's pour it. Oh yeah, we're good to go. <laughs> oh, it's clear too. Oh, nice, wonderful. <laughs> yeah, I'm thirsty. <laughs> there we go. All right, now we're cooking. No spoilers on tasting notes, or maybe you want to spoil. Maybe you want to like give an early tasting it's, note. It's um, it's sweet. Oh. But not like not cloyingly sweet, just like it has a sweetness to it. Mm-hmm. And it's uh, I think I tossed in a little honey malt that I had left over. So I think that's adding to it as well. But it's mm-hmm. uh, it looks great. It looks really good. It's Belgian-y. Mm. No head retention to, to speak of. Um, kind of dissipates quickly. Now, the the so I took six gallons of it and I hitched. So I was nervous about the high IBU that we formulate it in the recipe and I was worried that it wouldn't um, the bugs would kind of get killed off and it wouldn't take. So I over pitched Brett and Lacto. Mm. So I did uh, a, just a, a mixed bag of uh, bags that I had here, a couple from different yeast companies, et cetera, just different blends uh, as of today. So it's only been a month. There is a white pellicle. Oh, on top. So I think we're good to go. I haven't tasted it. I'm not, I'm going to, I'm going to refrain for a few months, Mm -hmm. but I'm thinking we got, we got bugs. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Nice. So that's the update. Excellent. Well, we got some feedback, uh, after hearing that episode, uh, Jordan from Brulosophy wrote in, uh, Jordan says, I wanted to reach out about your guests, Matt's comment that their sour beers were ruined from long-term aging on the yeast cake. Because you remember, uh, you, you were afraid that, uh, that you had left the beer on the primary yeast and that it had, it had ruined the beer over time, that you got um, autolysis and off flavors from Atol- that. Yeah, that was the last couple batches I did, yeah. 
Uh, Jordan says co-pitching and aging on the entire primary culture is actually common practice in Belgian sour beer production, and I imagine a lot of Amer- great American sour beer makers are doing it as well. I've won many gold medals using this method, including gold at NHC 2022. Ooh, congratulations, Jordan. In the American Wild Ale category. I'm not sure autolysis or extended aging on the primary yeast cake is the problem there. Uh, I've discussed tips for brewing great mixed fermentation beers in several episodes of the Brewlosophy podcast and the Brew Lab podcast. Check out episode 273 of the Brewlosophy podcast for one example. Uh, he says if he's getting medicinal flavors, it might be a problem with the cultures he pitched. Maybe the culture was too weak and produced off flavors. Or maybe he picked mm. up a non-intentional contamination elsewhere that overpowered the co-pitch. Possibly the beer got oxidized, creating acetic acid, which some might describe as medicinal. And then he later wrote back and said, uh, might, I think I might have found the problem. Later in the episode, your guest mentions they hopped the sour base to 18 IBUs. Mm-hmm. And he was afraid that that was way too high for effective acidification when relying on lacto. Uh, as lacto is hop intolerant. Um, so uh, then, Scott, and that's just a section of the email, uh, which I shared with you. And then our our, our friend Scott Housel wrote in uh, saying, I've had some success and have really enjoyed a sort of lambic style Solera process. And I've tasted it's delicious. Uh, I started almost exactly five years ago. James and Steve had several iterations during disaster shows. And like I say, it was delicious. I have mostly used Y-Yeast 3278 Lambic Blend, which is a co-pitch and dregs from quite a few mixed fermentation beers. I tend to let it go about seven months or so, then pull a small portion and have added separately raspberries, hibiscus, oak spirals soaked in red or white wine, Nelson, Nelson Savin, and even Christmassy Spices. Anyway, I'm so sad that you dumped all that beer, Scott says. Yeah. One thing I learned, and I'm so sorry to say this now, is to be patient. It's an ever-slowly changing beer. Why Yeast Blend had Pediococcus in it, and I was able to see the ropey phase that Lambic Brewers call sick. It went away. The first pellicle I saw scared the crap out of me. I almost dumped it, <laughs> but luckily looked it up. <laughs> and he advises going into uh, the Milk the Funk uh, wiki uh, yeah. for, for a lot more information. So... But it sounds like you're. It sounds like you're on the right track now. If you're if you're seeing evidence of you know a pellicle and and activity. Yeah, my my guess from what he had said, from what they both said, is it was the uh, the IBUs because I didn't have one of them could have been oxidation. Although I'm pretty, I feel like I'm, you know, I like I have a CO two tank that I'm constantly blowing when I do any when I open it at all. So I'm. I'm pretty cautious of that, but I, the IBUs, yeah, that's kind of where I think the medicinal, I think the medicinal part came from having a, a bitter beer and weak bugs. Mm. That's my guess. If it's not autolysis, which I, you know, I mean, when I looked it up and I read, oh, it has autolysis can cause this medicinal flavor. I thought, oh, well, there it is. And I, and again, looking in Michael Tonsmeyer's book, every single or at least every single process I think that he mentions, I don't know if it's every single one, but most of them talk about, you know, taking the the finished beer off the regular yeast cake and then pitching, mm. you know, or, you know, or co-pitching and then, re- but always removing the beer off of the yeast cake. Right. So that, so then that's where, that's where I went with, oh, that must be autolysis then. Uh, but if if yeah if it's not that then yeah my my guess is is that it's the high IBU and the and the weakness of the bugs that I pitch because I've heard from other brewers that sometimes the lab pitches are not as you know they're not going to be as powerful as say dregs from bottles that have been collecting and building up over time because mm. they've you know been in a few fights <laughs> so th- that's my guess. Uh, so that's why with this one, I decided to just over pitch because I, I was going to split batch and do uh, a bunch of different, you know, like split pitching. But I mean, you know, you know what? I have uh, four packs of the stuff. So I had like two bread packs and two lacto packs and I just dumped everything in there. And within a month, we have a pellicle. So that's to me a good sign. And I did take some of that other beer that I did dump and I added uh, dark 
tart cherry juice from you know like the the, the puree mm-hmm. and now that has a pellicle yeah. so maybe that sort of re-kicked up fermentation and now i might have a sour beer on my hands so who knows <laughs> we and, and i left one to go so i have another one too that i just went you know what i'm not going to dump it i'm just going to leave it go for like a couple years and just i don't know see what happens yeah we'll I, see I, yeah well good luck and and yeah th- that's the reason why i don't do more sour uh beers like that is i have zero patience it seems <laughs> oh yeah well yeah that's that's not part of it too i mean i thought i was being really patient i let i let the the beers that i dump go for eight months so i was like oh that's that's a long time mm-hmm. i guess not <laughs> Well, in, in, in my experience, if you have a beer like that, that goes sideways, you do something weird to, it's going to come out amazing and you'll never be able to make it. Mm, yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Just try to make that beer again. <laughs> right. Yeah, right. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so Josh, do you, do you have a lot of experience with the, you know, long-term aging on bugs? I, I dabbled in it over the years, but same as you, I sort of, I never had the patience to let it go. And the one time I did have the patience, I had so much patience and airlock went dry. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So that didn't turn out great. Um, it's something I'd like to get into again someday, just, you know, at home in the basement and kind of, I really, really like straight Brett beers, not necessarily sours, but I'm really into some of the cool Brett flavors. Um, but I'm not quite, we're not quite ready for that. <laughs> On a, on a big scale here in my basement, it would be be fun to start dabbling with some of that stuff again. Yeah, you got to make sure you clean everything well, <laughs> or, mm-hmm. or else you become a Brett Brewery. <laughs> right. Yeah. 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 Uh, which you know is not necessarily bad. Uh, you know, I think uh, Orval. Do they use Brett? I think they're doing okay. Uh, mm-hmm. True. <laughs> that is true. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, well, interesting. Uh, so, uh, I look forward to, uh, the, to tasting the, the fresh whenever you think it's ready to, to send out to us and, and, uh, yep. you know, however long it takes to, to get something, you know, more interesting, uh, out of the, the, the um, the aging process. Yeah. Yeah. I'm looking forward to it too. So we're here today to talk about, um, a new beer, and I I put it out there. You know what should we brew next? And I think Matt was it you that said white suggested white IPA. Yeah. What what is it? What is a white IPA? Uh, from my understanding, it's a Belgian wit IPA. Mm. And and what's it? How's it different from a Belgian IPA? <laughs> Remember Belgian <laughs> IPAs? <laughs> yeah. Uh, if I'm being honest, I don't really know. I I just know that uh, I think what, who made the Belgian IPA back in the day? It was Flying Dog. Mm-hmm. Flying Dog. Or are they still? They must still make it, right? I think Stone made one too, right? And um, and the yep. bre- the brewery out in California uh, spelled in, in a fancy way. Oh, right, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They made one. Ale Asylum out of Wisconsin made a really good one. That fa- that's it's, I, I, it's kind of faded. That style you don't hear about it much anymore. No, no, it had its moment, but I, I, I think the white IPA, especially with, with, you know, kind of, kind of hooks onto the same thread as the hazy trend. Mm. It's right, not really it's a trend that's never going away. But is is a white IPA to a hefe, uh, like the Belgian IPA, maybe was to the triple? I can buy that analogy. Yeah, yeah, that's where I'm. That's where I'm thinking is a a Belgian IPA is like taking a you know, yeah, like a single or a triple and hopping it. Mm. And a white IPA is taking a Belgian wit or a wit beer and hopping that, mm. but not adding the spices, not adding coriander, orange peel, things like that. Right. So basically a wheat, a wheated IPA, but with a Belgian yeast. So I was thinking, um, I, I sent you guys some beers and I was thinking, you know, I made this this hoppy raw ale, uh, which people are going to get sick of me talking about. But it's what I've got on tap right now. So uh, <laughs> and I think it's a fun beer. And I think it's a, a fun concept. And I was thinking, you know, if 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 you want a, a hoppy, you know, white IPA, maybe maybe what about a hoppy raw white IPA? And so I sent you guys uh, these samples 
of this uh, this hoppy raw beer, and uh, I, I want to get your feedback on it. And uh, you know, if we if we like it and we like the concept, maybe you know we could go ahead with you know doing like a raw white mm-hmm. IPA. So I've got mine in front of me. As do I. I yeah, I do too. Is this a keg fill? Uh, yes. Okay. Why is it? Is it? Does it get a lot of carbonation? Yes. Oh. Hmm. Yeah. Oh, interesting. Mine. Mine seems normal. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Hmm. Well, I hope there hasn't been some secondary activity. <laughs> <laughs> uh, of course, you're it's you're up high. Weird. You're it's up high there, bugs. Matt. Um, I am. It's the pressure. Yeah, we know that now. <laughs> oh yeah, and we didn't talk about it. <laughs> I've mentioned another show. We got feedback on the pressure gauge thing. Uh, that the pressure gauge is relative pressure, not absolute pressure. And that's right. why it works out. Just listen yep. to, just listen to uh, a couple episodes ago when I was reading email, if you want, <laughs> but uh, here's a recipe for the, uh, the hoppy raw ale very quickly, uh, mm-hmm. into seven gallons of water. I put 12 pounds or 5.4 kilograms of Vienna malt and uh, seven gallons is 26.5 liters. And I did a, uh, uh, a recirculated mash at 148 degrees Fahrenheit or 64.4 C for two hours. Within the first like 20 minutes of that, you know, when I, when the work, you know, had some sort of, um, con- uh, uh, not convergence, uh, <laughs> conversion, <laughs> conversion. Thank you. Oh my God. <laughs> I'm losing my mind. Uh, when it when it had some conversion, I I took about two quarts of that wort uh, out of the uh, mash tun, and I boiled in, in a hop tea two ounces or fifty six grams of Cascade for sixty minutes mm. in that hop tea. I added that back on top of the mash for the mash to continue to recirculate through that. At the end of that two hour uh, initial mash rest, I raised the temperature to 170 degrees Fahrenheit or 77C. And once it reached that, I stayed there for 10 minutes for a mash out. I then collected the wort, the hot wort into a plastic bucket where I did a hop stand for 10 minutes with two ounces or 56 grams of Cascade again. I chilled to 90 degrees Fahrenheit or 32C and added A37 POG, which is a kvike yeast from Imperial. Uh, once fermentation had calmed down a little bit, I dry hopped with another two ounces or 56 grams of Cascade for two days. And then I kegged. So it's, the beer started out at 1048, final gravity 1012 for an ABV of 4.7%. So the only boiling was that, you know, that just that two quarts of hop tea, essentially. And the, and the highest the temp ever went was 170 or did it go up to 180? <clears throat> 170. 170. For how long? For okay. for 10 minutes for a, for a, a mash out. What do you guys think? I'm surprised. In a good way? It's, yeah, it is. It's nice and hoppy. It's now it's, uh, remind me, it's all Vienna malt. Yeah, it's 100 percent. It's a smash beer. It's Vienna malt in Cascade in Cascade. Uh, OK, it is. I'm surprised it's only Cascade, really. Yeah, to me, it, it it tastes like more than just Cascade. Well, some of that could be the pog, right? Mm-hmm. Because Imperial Imperial says at the lower end of the temperature range, you get kind of lemony character, and at the upper end, you get like guava and tropical fruits. I pitched at ninety degrees Fahrenheit or thirty two C, then brought it inside the house mm-hmm. uh, because it was still cool outside. So mm-hmm. it did it did lose that temperature you know, over time. Um, but you know, surely the, I mean, the, the, the airlock was bubbling like two hours after I pitched. So, <laughs> so the yeast was already working. Yeah. Yeah. It has a tropical fruit note. It really does. Yeah. I don't know what tropical fruit. Mm-hmm. I don't eat a lot of tropical fruit. <laughs> mangoes. I guess I like mangoes, but yeah. Yeah, I'm surprised that that's really good. Actually, I'm like I was just nervous about the the raw ale. It's it's even a little sweet, but like in a like it like the sweetness sort of adds to the tropical fruit note. It's not like there's no way in it's not cloying, but it's um 
it's like got a little touch of sweetness at the end that that kind of like goes along with the hops or perhaps the yeast i was i was when i poured it the color kind of threw me off for being a it, it was browner than I thought it would be. But, but yeah, that's the, you think that's the Vienna or I that's the Vienna? I think yeah. It, I mean, it could be a little oxidation, maybe, but I think most of it's just from the Vienna, mm-hmm. and it's it's really tasty. Yeah, I'm not getting an oxidative like note really. If I am, it's subtle, but I'm usually pretty. I feel like I'm pretty sensitive to oxidation, mm-hmm. but. Yeah, for me, the, the hops are still very fresh. I mean, it's been in the keg here, you know, the whole time. Um, yeah. <clears throat> but um, I like it quite a bit. Uh, yeah, I think it's really good. Chris Chris Colby didn't like it at all. What did he say? Because <laughs> you told us not to not to listen. <laughs> yeah, I did, I, uh, yeah, I told you not to listen to the show uh, that he was on, not because I wanted to throw Chris under the bus, but because I wanted to get you guys' Yeah, fresh raw take, if you feedback. will. Yeah, raw take. <laughs> uh, he did not like the raw character of the grain. He hmm. he says, you know, he likes eating grain, you know, just chomping on grain out of the bin, or you know, he likes eating cereal grain for breakfast. But he said that there was a flavor of, I think he used the word grassy, kind of uh, raw hmm. malt character. Really? Hmm. Yeah, that it. I was flabbergasted. <laughs> I was like, "What?" <laughs> and that's not saying that he doesn't taste that. I think I believe him. He's he's uh, you know recogn- he's he's done some judging. He knows what he's talking about. He's drinking yeah, beer. Sure. Uh, so he said, "Well, maybe it's like asparagus, you know, or or, or not sub- asparagus, oh, sal- gee- cilantro. Oh. Maybe yeah, it's, sure. maybe it's like cilantro, where some people love it and other people are just like, no, you know." But I don't get any off flavors at all in this. Um, the only difference to me from a standard uh, pale ale kind of a thing is it's got quite a bit of mouthfeel to me. And yeah. when I kegged this beer, it was the least amount of trube in the bottom of a fermenter that I've ever seen. <laughs> it's like all the protein was still in the in the beer. Mm-hmm. Uh huh. And if you look at the lacing on the on you know on the side of the yeah. glass, I'm assuming you're seeing the same thing I am. Yeah, 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 yeah for sure. So, um, uh, I could maybe be convinced that there's, and I don't know if this is similar, but like a a tea like characteristic. Hmm. But I wouldn't say like I wouldn't say tea in like astringency, but maybe tea in like the. Like where you can actually taste the leafy matter in the tea, hmm. mm-hmm. almost like green tea more than than say black tea. I could be convinced, but I'm not. I'm not. It's not jumping out at me. I'm trying to find that grassy note, and I'm like, I'm grasping at grass here. Right. Yeah, and and again, not to throw uh, Chris under the bus because I do trust his taste buds. I. I was like, is there something wrong with me? <laughs> Cause you know, Steve said he liked it, but he, he likes everything, you know, Hey Mike. Sure. Uh, <laughs> so he's got to spend the rest of the day with you. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> he's in my house. <laughs> yeah, he's at your house. <laughs> Where you guys can well, wonder, you don't like it. Get out. <laughs> I wonder if maybe Chris's bottle picked up a little bit of oxygen. I wonder if, if just yeah, a little bit of oxidation would highlight that. Well, I had More, him, yeah. I sent him two bottles and I had him open the other bottle and he said it tasted the same. So Okay. If I screwed up, okay. I screwed up twice. <laughs> but it didn't with all right. so Maybe it's just the Vienna then. Like maybe the Vienna was a little too like you know, had you had done it with say something as simple as two row or or you know, you wouldn't have got that same note because it's just so neutral in its flavor profile. Mm-hmm. Because Vienna, you know, you add it to, I mean, for malt flavor. Mm-hmm. So that's definitely going to come through. And if, I mean, it, you know, is it, so like, does he get that or do, do you get that when you drink just wort before you boil it? Because I do that all the time. I like making uh, hot scotchies mm-hmm. when I brew. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So it's like, to me, so that, that, so that tea-like flavor of adding 
you know, having like sweet wort and and scotch, to me, I can I can see that the similarities of this beer and that, but I don't get. But that's why I can say I can be I can be convinced it's tea like. But yeah, that's about it. What do you think of the the balance of bitterness? Is it bitter enough, or what's the hop character? You know, uh, I adding that tea to the top of the mash was different from anything I'd ever done before. Is that's, it a, is yeah, it balanced enough? I think you could. But I don't think it's bad. I think if it was another ten ish IVUs, I mean, yeah, actually measuring ten is probably tough. But I think it could, it, it might just crispin it up a little bit. But for what it is, yeah, I, I, I wouldn't hate having it on tap at home. Oh, I would agree. I would go. I would go a little bit more bitter. But that's my, that could just be my palate. You know, it's just I like bitter things. Yeah. One, one thing uh, next time when I make the hop tea, I'm going to collect more wort than I did because over an hour, that stuff was pretty sludgy at the end. Of- <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was like pudding. It's like hop pudding at the end. So, uh, mm. uh, you know, I don't know if that hurt the, uh, you know, extraction or the uh, isomerization. Um I don't know. Um, you know what? As this beer warms up, I'm starting to get that malt note. It's it's not a turnoff. It just doesn't mean that it's. But I'm get I'm getting it more and more as it warms, hmm. and as I take smaller and smaller sips just to try to detect it. But I kind of like it. Yeah, I like that. <laughs> I mean, your We're comparison all... to tea is. I mean, I can see that. I can see that that. There's not an astringency, but yeah, I can see no. the comparison to a a like a malt tea. You know, I'm going to go out on a limb here, and I think you should do the white IPA the same way. Mm. Okay, that's what I was looking I for. I agree. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think I, I think especially doing this same process with really pale malts and wheat. Yeah. Yep. Like yeah. Pilsner malt and wheat, maybe and. I think any of that kind of over maltiness may just get, it, it may be a, a benefit of that. Yeah. What would you think, and I may be getting ahead of us, uh, of ourselves here, but what would you think of doing, say, a 100% white wheat malt beer? If that, you can get it to mash. I was going to say that I makes think, me a little nervous, yeah. I've done it before. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Wh- uh, wheat malt has plenty of diastatic power to convert itself. And the, and the beer is not too different from, you know, barley. Of course, it's, you know, I, I boiled it. Um, mm-hmm. But I'm thinking, you know, it's been a while since I've done like 100% wheat beer. But I've done, you know, like 50-50 wheat and rye beers. Um, and mm-hmm. then, like I say, there's plenty of... Um, diastatic power have you done it raw no <laughs> hmm. that's, that's a weird question yeah exactly <laughs> don't take that out of context <laughs> uh, james spencer of basic brewing says he's never done it raw <laughs> <laughs> i don't see any reason why 100 percent we won't work but but yeah but is it yeah. desirable for the we'll style, find out, right? There's yeah. only one way to find out. Yeah, yeah, I'd say we go for it. In the meantime, right. here, here's a, here's an a, an email from uh, Mo. I'm going to say I M M O in Berlin, uh, who wrote after he heard uh, Matt and my conversation about uh, Matt's uh, whirlpool hopping experiment. Um, and you and I talked about this raw ale. I think I don't know. I don't think I had brewed it yet. Uh, but we, t- I talked about, uh, you know, I tossed the idea out there, you know, in your, in your quest to make hazy beers. I mean, this is definitely right. a hazy beer. It ain't, yeah. gonna, it ain't gonna clear. Um, you know, I, I tossed the idea of doing a, a, a raw beer out there, and, and Mo, hoping I'm getting that right, says I, I immediately thought about a raw ale too. When Matt wondered how to pull off a two ingredient hazy, he says I mash hop in my raw hazies. I usually do a normal 60-minute mash and add three times the bittering addition I would normally use when mashing in. 
So the bittering happens in the mash. Mm. I then mash out for 10 minutes at 80 degrees Celsius with my aroma addition, and that's it. If I sparge with cold water, I barely have to chill the wort before I put in the Kavai yeast. Nice and hazy. Job done. Greetings from Berlin. So mm. put that in the... In the uh, yeah, because you know, a, a Belgian yeast will do well at the warmer temperatures, too. For sure, yeah. Not maybe not ninety degrees Fahrenheit, but not ninety, no. <laughs> 80, 80 for sure. Oh well. Eight, yeah, eighty you could do, definitely. I think you could probably do ninety and it wouldn't be it wouldn't be the craziest thing ever. I've done Cezanne's up over a hundred. Oh wow. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, oh yeah, you talked about it. In fact you were featured on the disaster show, weren't you? With <laughs> That's true. Yeah. The disaster that wasn't really a disaster. Yeah, talk about non repeatable beers. Uh <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, so should we go with, let's start with the, with the, have you got your, your thingy, uh, your, your, th- yep. your thingy open there, Matt? It's, it's my thingy's <laughs> open and it's raw. <laughs> All right. Ouch. There's a salve for that. There's a poultice, <laughs> maybe an ointment. Uh, shall we, shall All we right. just do like, what about like, you know, I use 12 pounds of uh, Vienna for this beer. Uh, okay. And, uh, you know, I wound up with 1048 for, a, you know, starting gravity without a boil. Should we do like, do we want higher gravity or do we, or is that good enough for this style? Uh, so I just put in 12 pounds of uh, white wheat malt and I got a ABV of 5.4. But, but that's with a boil. Sure is with a boil. Uh, let me. Of course, I got 4.7. With no boil, with 12 pounds of Vienna. What will happen when I put the boil time in at zero? <laughs> does not compute. <laughs> uh, yep, does not compute. <laughs> Did not change the ABV whatsoever, so I don't know. You're doing it wrong. I guess so. Oh, wait, hold on. Well, no, I, no. No, that's okay. what the computer says you're doing. You're doing it wrong. Yep. Cannot compute. Okay, so, Okay. So I think maybe, maybe to bring the gravity up just a little bit, we do maybe like thirteen pounds of white wheat. Well, I don't know. Wait, do, do I, I kind of like the low ABV, but okay. I'm thinking for summer lawnmower, you know. Yeah. I mean, even if you went up a couple pounds, you're not. Even if you went up to say thirteen pounds on your system, it's five five point eight. So you're closer to six. And if I, I kind of like the, you know, the seven gallons or 26 and a half liters, um, you know, I got, I got the, I got the, I got five gallons in, in the end, I got five gallons into the keg. Um, so, right. So hold on a second. Cause we got to, that means we got to change our, so you got five gallons into the keg. Mm-hmm. All right. So in other words, uh, if we add grain, I'm probably going to have to add a little bit of water to compensate for, you know, the the stuff that's being locked up in the mm-hmm. in the mash. All right, let's see here. So okay, that changes things. So if we did, if you did, sorry, if you did 12 pounds of white wheat, it's now at 6.3 percent. So I had to change the. Boil off, I made zero. Uh, the batch volume, the fermenter volume, will be five gallons. And that's with the same mash efficiency of about 70%. Uh, a little bit of chiller loss, treb loss at about a qu- uh, quarter a gallon. I think, I, I, yeah. don't think it's, I don't think it's going to be that hot. I think the I think the software just doesn't know what to do. With, it probably doesn't no. <laughs> with no boil. No. <laughs> yeah. And that's uh specifically that's using uh Brees's white wheat malt. Is that I'm assuming that's what you would use? Uh probably. It doesn't really matter at this point. It doesn't know anything. <laughs> we're we're going off the going off the rails. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're making yeah, we're uh, flying by the seat of our pants, if you will. Yeah. All right. So, uh, then let's talk about hops. Yeah, let's just. I'm going to stick with 12 pounds. Yeah, of, of I think white 12 wheat. is good. 
Yep. And the seven gallons of water, because it worked out well with that. Yep. Um, and I don't think I'll have a problem with a stuck sparge, because I'm going to be... Well, number one, it's, you know, it's brewing a bag, and I'm going to be recirculating for two hours at, you know, 148 or 64.4 C, and then doing a mash out. And, I, you yeah. know, wheat is notorious for being sticky, but I yeah. think I think mashing that long, um, I don't think I'll have a problem. Yeah, you could always throw some rice hulls in there too. That's true. When That's brewing part- a bag, you should be okay. I mean, yeah. even if you have to, you know, pull it up and squeeze it a little bit. Yeah, that that's the one thing with this with this hoppy with this first hoppy raw ale. I didn't squeeze the bag. I usually, you know, take the bag out and squeeze it or let it drain. This yeah. time I didn't because I wanted the kind of filtering effect of the of the mash. You know, mm. filter mm-hmm. some of the solids out at least. What about hops? Yeah, what about hops? So, my first instinct was to go uh, as new American as we can get. Or as new age, new agey, uh, <laughs> you know, and yeah, I've got my, uh, I've got my wind chimes. Can, yeah, I've got my yeah, wind yeah. chimes. <laughs> Just any hops from the Pure Mood soundtrack, that would be. <laughs> from the Wyndham Hills collection. Uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, boy. Um, yeah, I'm thinking like, you know, Citra, Galaxy, Mosaic, uh, you know, any of those, you know, sort of modern tropical fruit hops mm-hmm. i think amarillo would be a really good yeah shout at that too i had another one on my head now it's done a strata might be a good one that's Ooh, a, little yeah. more, a little more pineapple-y but that could be that could be cool too what about like nectaron peacherine oh go yeah that, go that crazy cool too. yeah so what should we use for bittering um you know because that's should we do like a higher alpha hop for, for the bittering when I'm making my hop pudding? <laughs> I suppose if you use a higher alpha, then maybe it won't be so pudding if you have a little bit less hot matter in that tea. Or maybe yeah. do, do a cryo, maybe? No. No? For bittering, well, I, don't, I would, I would, I would maybe do cryo in the dry hop, but I don't know if I would do it in the boil or in the mash. I guess. Okay, I don't it all know. Depends. Though. Well, it depends on how hot it's going to get. You know, even a, even a high alpha hop, if you're only getting it up to 170. Mm. Well, this, you know, I'll be boiling the hop tea. Oh, true, true, true. Oh, okay, for what ten minutes or so? No, I boiled for an hour. Oh, <laughs> because I wanted oh, to wow. get the, I wanted to get the you know as many IBUs as I could for the bittering. Oh, okay, you know. I mean, what about Citra? Citra's always. I mean, Citra's good in everything. Yeah, <laughs> and I think it would really saying, it would really yeah. work in this. Can't really go wrong there. I think we should do like Citra, Amarillo, and Mosaic. That doesn't sound terrible. <laughs> <laughs> I just picked three randoms. Not that random. I'm sure a lot of, I'm sure there's a lot of hazy IPs I had with that exact. Should we should we do two ounces of Citra again? And, and instead, you know, I did two ounces of the Cascade was only six point one percent alpha acid. You know, if we yeah. bump if we bump up the you know to a high, the higher alpha acid of the Citra, two ounces of that, um, you know, that would raise our theoretically raise our bitterness of the beer which is we said was kind of moderate in this iteration. So maybe maybe 2 ounces of citra for that hop tea. Yeah. I mean that would be yeah, double the bitterness. Sure. That's going that, to I mean according I don't know if this is worth anything. According <laughs> to my calculations, <laughs> I'd be used to be 84. Now that's boiling 2 ounces of citra for 60 minutes, but it doesn't But that's Yeah. The way that it's going to be applied, you know, on the top of the mash and, you know, yeah. just being sprayed on, uh, you know, yeah. it's going to lose some of that on the way down. Yeah. I mean, I would make it an IPA, though. Yeah. So Citra, Amarillo, and Mosaic. 
do we want to do kind of this a similar approach of what I did with this beer and, you know, like do a hop stand with the hot work coming out of the, out of the mash with maybe an ounce of each. I think go a little higher. Mm -hmm. I do too. Okay. I think if you want two, two of each, maybe at least. Ooh. Yeah. But I like, I mean, I like the hop character you got out of it with that method in this, in this raw beer. How did you do the, um, whirlpool? Well, essentially when I, you know, at the end of that, uh, mash out at 170 degrees Fahrenheit, I just ran off the, the wort into a plastic bucket and, mm -hmm. and put the hops in there. So for it's how a, long? Uh, 10 minutes. So and you would say that's, that was probably like a hundred and maybe 60, maybe even 155 degrees because of that. Yeah. Heat loss. Yeah. Probably. Cause it, okay. it, it hit the, you know, the bucket. It it wasn't cold outside, but it wasn't hot. So, okay, should I go longer on that? You could, but I don't think it'll make that much of a difference. But I, I doubt it. So, so I'm putting in like two ounces of citra, two ounces of almarillo, two ounces of mosaic at these different stages. But what if it was? Uh, well, that's going to be harder to do. I was thinking like, what if you just did like a mix of all three for all three stages? Mm. Mm -hmm. like a blend mm -hmm. yeah just sort of blend them all and then pull out two oh. ounce two ounce two ounce oh. yeah. <laughs> just mix them all together yeah <laughs> yeah why not yeah okay yeah so just... take a big bucket yeah i'm all know, for it throw six <laughs> ounces of all three of these in now and then you know do a yahtzee kind of yeah it's a yahtzee brew and i guess the theoretically well, do I want to open for that dry hop? Mm -hmm. Do I do I want? I don't want to. I don't want to open uh, those nitro, you know, flushed packets for mm -hmm. you know four days or whatever before I dry hop. Uh, oh, yeah. So maybe just do two ounces of each. Well, actually, four ounces of each. What if we just stick to, what if we didn't do the third hop? We just did Citra and Amarillo. Oh, okay. Just to make things a little easier. Okay. I'm and then that way you just twice. do, yeah, an ounce, an ounce for the, an ounce, an ounce. You know, you can, then you can have um, two packets fully flush for the dry hop. Right. So an ounce of each for the hop tea, an ounce of each for the hop stand, and then an ounce of each for the dry hop yes okay that's easy after that just yeast which will be different should we do white out from imperial yep. you're gonna do that at 80 degrees uh the, or whatever yeah what do you think what are the what are the specs from uh let me let me look up um <clears throat> imperial. they say temperature between i mean i don't know this is in the app but um Temperature between 62 and 72 Fahrenheit. Max ABV of 10, medium flocculation. Yeah, 62 to 72. Should we push it? <laughs> I mean, I think you just, I think you just kind of, I mean, at this point. <laughs> we're breaking all the rules anyway. Yeah, you break, we're breaking every rule, so you might as well break them. We we'll call it Rule Breaker White IPA. All right. Or Raw Breaker. Nah, nope, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> it's a family show. <laughs> so pitch it, pitch at eighty, the white yeah. out at eighty. Oh, right. Yeah, I like it. All right. Yeah, it's your fault if it doesn't work. That's <laughs> <laughs> obviously. <laughs> I'm not sending any to Chris. That's for sure. <laughs> I might just torture him. Uh, <laughs> If you didn't like that beer, what do you think about this? Yeah, what do you think about all wheat? <laughs> I think this. I think this will be a cool beer. Yeah, I think so too. Um, okay. I mean, if you, if you guys like this concept, if you like the the hoppy raw ale, um, <clears throat> why not push it one step further? Right. Yeah, right. yeah. I, I like think it. I, I jotted some notes down. I think I'm going to do a spin on this and, and put it on tap and gambit. Oh. Really? Because I, I I had a wit on my on my brew schedule anyway, and the way I've done some 
it's not technically raw IPAs here is I won't bring them all the way up to a boil, but I'll bring them to like 195 just to make sure everything's pasteurized. Yeah. Right? And then do a big whirlpool at like that, you know, maybe pull it back down to 180 before I drop hops or something. Um, and I think something similar to that would be cool. So I'm going to, I'm going to see what I can pull together. But you're not going to do 100% wheat. No, I'll probably go 50 50 pills. Okay. Okay. Because I do, I do need to get it done within a week. <laughs> I think, <laughs> yep. or at least on my system, to, to try and louder 100% wheat. That would be rough. I may never leave. So, <laughs> um, but I think 50 50 would, would get us, you know, still in that, in that same ballpark. So, that'd be awesome. Yeah, that would be awesome. Yeah, I think it'd be fun. I think it'd be a fun beer to have on tap for summer anyway. So, for spring, I don't even know what season it is up here right now, but <laughs> yeah, same. <laughs> Yeah, it just, was, just got out of a snowstorm. Yeah, yeah. It, it was 35 <laughs> degrees here this morning, so uh, we're in a little bit of the same or similar mm-hmm. situation. It's now 66, so <laughs> we got all seasons, nice. all seasons right. in one day. Yeah, <laughs> along with all the pollen, <clears throat> which is my why, why I keep <laughs> coughing. Uh, <clears throat> well, do you guys have time for another beer? Sure, sure. Now this is a beer that that Chris Colby actually liked. So <laughs> you guys can even it out. <laughs> I sent I you. Say, maybe that means Matt and I will hate it. <laughs> exactly. Uh, so I sent you guys bottles of my single. Now, is this one bottle conditioned or keg fill? Uh, it is bottle conditioned. Okay. Okay. And this was a recipe that Chris Colby and I came up with. Uh, and like I say, he liked it. And Steve liked it. Mm-hmm. Uh, Steve likes. Okay. Yeah, surprise. Wow. All right. Steve <laughs> liked it. <laughs> hey, now we're talking. Jeez. And I and I liked it. The only complaint I had was that I only made two and a half gallons of it. So, mm-hmm. um, mm. just just like a, a Belgian single, kind of the the Patters beer sort yeah. of style. Yeah. It's it was a two and a half gallon batch or nine point mm-hmm. five liters, three point five pounds or one point six kilograms of avant garde pills. 12 ounces or 340 grams of wheat malt, uh, and then mashed for 152, uh, 152 degrees Fahrenheit or 67C for 60 minutes. Uh, into the boil, I put 12 ounces or 340 grams of just table sugar, uh, 8 grams of nugget for 60 minutes, 14 grams of Herzbrucker at flame out. And those are just, you know, freezer hops that I had. Yep. <laughs> Uh, Fermentus BE-256, 5 grams of that. Original gravity 1048, following gravity 1002. For a six, yeah, it's dry. 6%. Ooh, six per, was, yeah. 6%. yeah. So cheers, guys. Cheers. Cheers. I already drank. <laughs> I didn't stare in your eyes either. <laughs> I was just drinking again. I, I stared into the eyes of your thumbnail. So oh, My thumbnail. <laughs> your profile pic which is which is me staring directly into your soul <laughs> it is it's a thing to behold <laughs> now it's a clear beer for my for my standards yeah it's it's crystal clear it's this is oh mine's a little hazy oh oh really mm-hmm. interestingly might've, i don't know might have got i sh- did i did uh shake this all over the place. oh yeah well, there you go it's, you did, you did open it champagne cooler, style so. yeah it's it's yeah. bottle condition so there are dregs yeah Oh yeah, it's been it's been in a cooler and in in my truck and carried all over the place. So, oh. <laughs> yeah, this is really good. I oh. like it a lot. Yeah, yeah. Excellent. I, you know what? I wish it had more Belgian character. A little yeah. bit. It could have a little bit more, couldn't it? But that would be my only critique. It's just a preference, I guess. But other than that, it is crazy dry. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this is it's a. Uh, I don't really get any. I mean, not that you would in this beer. I don't get a lot of hop character at all. Mm-mm. Just, just on the just bitterness, but you know, to balance it really. I love this style. Like the Belgian you know, singles, beer. one of my yep, one of my favorite things to brew. That's another thing. Literally written right under wit on my schedule on the wall is Patters beer. So that's another one that in the next you know month or so we'll have one on tap at Gambit because it's. Such an easy drinking beer that's interesting but approachable. 
it's a great it's a great beer for beer nerds. It's a great beer for people that aren't that much into beer. Yeah. So I I love it. Yeah. Yeah, when I was yeah. when I collected my wort and it was only ten forty eight, I was like, Well, I guess it'll this will be a lower gravity beer than I anticipated. And then it fermented all the way to ten oh two and I was like, Oh yeah. <laughs> wow. Okay. <laughs> So what's your approach, Josh, when you make a, like one of these, like a single or, you know. Like... Yeah. So I just pulled up, I happen to have Beersmith up. So my recipe is just, it's like 95% filter malt and just a little bit of biscuit malt. Mm. Uh, mm. Just for a little bit of extra. Graininess. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then I really like using Mandarina Bavaria in mm. a lot of, in a lot of like, um kind of the, the belgian stuff lighter belgian stuff and i actually just i have a, a mybach in a tank as well that i use mandarina in just to give it a little bit of like fruit almost like orange marmalade with the breadiness of that beer wow. yeah which has always been a cool combo i think and then there you know there's some other hops that can do that too but i've, I've always been a big fan of the mandarina bavaria and you keep it european yeah yep for sure well, guys, um, we end we we go in on a high note. We end on a high note, with, and there's lots of information here. This is like the most information yeah. packed one of these I think that we've had. <laughs> there you go. We're we're learning. We have some learnings. <laughs> so, so I I have a I have my recipe now, and so I'll get my ingredients, and uh, I'll keep you guys posted on on how it goes. And yeah, I will as well. And this will be, you know, pushing the pushing the boundaries a bit. And and I thanks. feel left out. I feel like I want to do it too. Well, f- feel free. Do you <laughs> think? Like, wait, I don't. Nobody's stopping you. Yeah, it's true. <clears throat> we could do it. We could do a three. Oh like, well, guys, oh, that's it. I'll be all right. <laughs> you know, we could. We could. I mean, really, I'm already looking forward to a three way white IPA tasting. So, yeah, all right, there we go. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, that's why I I suggested it because I'm like, man, I haven't had one of those in a minute. Yeah. And I was like, I want, I want one. Let's do it. <laughs> All right, maybe, maybe I will. <laughs> and uh, thanks to Mika Leitinen, uh author of Viking Age Brew, for the uh, inspiration for the uh, hoppy raw ale. Uh, I th- I thought it turned out really well. Uh, yeah, it, it's, there's something totally agree. there's something different about it. Um, that if you didn't tell me, you know, that there was a difference in the process, I couldn't tell you what was different about it. But, um. It it really is a fun beer, and I think the white one will be as fun, if not funner. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. I think it's going to be. I think it's uh, you're you're on a path to success. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thanks, guys. Thank you. Thanks, James. Many thanks to Matt and to Josh. So excited about tasting our white IPAs together. Matt emailed that he's already brewed his, too, and hoping Josh is not far behind. Along with Brew Cabin, you can get all the great advice and info you need for your pool and hot tub and such at Matt's Swim University. And if you're in close, close enough to drop by to, to Gambit Brewing to see Josh and to taste his beers in St. Paul, Minnesota, I'm jealous, gotta say. If you have brewing questions, show suggestions, or just want to say how do you write to james at basicbrewing.com or just fill out the contact form at basicbrewing.com and please don't tell us where you're from. Check out our mobile-friendly shop at basicbrewingshop.com. Thanks to everybody supporting us through our Patreon page. Special goodies coming your way. Check that out at patreon.com slash basicbrewing. It's all until next time. Till then, thanks for listening, everybody. I'm James Spencer. Production help for Basic Brewing Radio and our website is provided by Kelly Dotson. Basic Brewing Radio is a production of Active Voicing. We'll talk to you next time, everybody. In the meantime, stay well and stay tuned. So long. <laughs>